Psalm 45. For the choir director, according to the Shoshanim, a mascal of the sons of Korah, a song of love. This will be the first song of love that we've come across and specifically written in the, in the uh, Psalms. <clears throat> my heart overflows with a good theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword on thy thigh, O mighty one, in, the, in thy splendor and thy majesty. And in thy majesty, ride on victoriously for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness. Let thy right hand teach thee awesome things, and thine arrows are sharp. The people fall, peoples fall under thee. Thine arrows are in the heart of the king's enemies. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of uprightness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of joy above thy fellows. All thy garments are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. Out of ivory palaces, stringed instruments have made made thee glad. King's daughters are among thy noble ladies. At thy right hand stands the queen in gold from Ophir. Listen, O daughter, give attention and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. Then then the king will desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Bow down to him. And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. And the rich among the people will entreat your favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is interwoven with gold. She will be led to the king in embroidered work. The virgins, her companions who follow her, will be brought to thee. They will be led forth with gladness and rejoicing. They will enter into the king's palace. In the place of your fathers will be your sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the peoples will give thee thanks forever and ever. It's possible that the sons of Korah here are describing a wedding event. Something that, you know, just in his description, the king goes out. He's about to marry somebody and he goes out in all of his, his, uh, you know, splendor. And then, you know, they're wishing his throne be established forever and ever. And then here comes the bride and all the women are encouraging her. And it's just a, a glorious and enjoyable event. But on our side of of things, when we're looking back at historically, you could see in this, he's like he's talking about the wedding supper of the Lamb. He's talking about a future event when the king of kings will go forth. And he'll put down all of his enemies and then he'll gather his bride together and they'll have this glorious time together. My heart overflows with a good thing. When we think about a marriage, a wedding, that's a joyous occasion. What a blessing that is. We think about, you know, the the, the wedding supper of the Lamb in the future when Jesus comes. What a glorious event that will be. And so the sons of Korah who wrote this, he says, I address my verses to the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And he's ready. He's got got a good good mind about him. He's happy. He's joyful. And he's, he's ready to address his verses to the king. Which king is he addressing to? Well, since we don't know exactly when it was written, it's hard for us to to know exactly who he's writing to. Maybe he's writing to Solomon. Maybe Solomon, in one of his 300 marriages, (laughs) you know, had a wedding just like this, where he went out and rode out in his splendor, and he's shooting arrows at, at, you know, his enemies, and people are wishing that his throne is established, and then he literally marries the daughter of Tyre, the daughter of the king of Tyre. You know, it was Israel and Tyre at that point had a good relationship. They were bringing lumber, they were bringing craftsmen, they were do- building all sorts of things uh, together. And so there was a really good relationship. Of course, now, Tyre being in Le- modern day Lebanon is not a very good relationship with Israel. In fact, they're enemies. Hezbollah is coming across the border, they're being invaded on two sides. It's just not a good thing. But the king is coming. The future king is coming. He's going to fight against his enemies. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. And he says, gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one. If we, if we apply this to Christ, there is this moment that the writer looks forward to and he's calling for the Lord to come. Come, gird your sword on your thigh. 
Ride victoriously in your majesty. How did Jesus come the first time? In a baby. He was a baby. He didn't have any majesty other than, you know, he's, he's a baby. And that's an awesome event. But he wasn't dressed in royal robes. He didn't come out glowing. You know, he's just a normal little baby. But in the next time he comes, he's going to come in all of his majesty. And what he's going to do is he's going to ride in victory. He's going to have his sword on his thigh. He's going to be prepared for battle. And it will be a righteous war when the Lord fights against his enemies. In your splendor and in your majesty ride. Let your, let your majesty ride in, let the, in thy majesty ride in victory for the cause of truth and meekness of righteousness. So people are fighting on both sides. It's hard to discern who's right. If you listen to the news media, they'll say the Israel, Israelis are right. They'll say the Palestinians are right, depending on which side you're you're listening to, but when Jesus comes, he comes and he, he rides victoriously for the cause of what really is true, real truth. Not, not what some person's version of the truth is, what the real truth is for real meekness, for real righteousness. And he says, let your right hand teach the awesome things. When we think about awesome, the word that we, we use the word like, man, that's so awesome. Like it's a good thing. And it is a good thing. Awesome is a good thing. But it literally brings awe to people. So people, when Jesus comes and he, and he comes in riding in his majesty in victory, people will stand back in awe. This is, you know, it, it blows their mind that he's even there. And, and it'll be awe, they'll be awestruck, fear will fall upon them. They just won't be able to deal with that. They'll be just, here he is. And the Bible says the nations will mourn. They'll mourn at his coming. Here he is. Here he comes. Your arrows are sharp. Peoples fall under you. Your arrows are in the heart of the king's enemy. What is the Lord going to do to the king, to the enemies of his people, of his enemies? Psalm 2 says he's going to laugh at them. And then he says he's going to slaughter them. <clears throat> Most of us are not acquainted with war. We've lived in a time of peace. We've enjoyed that. But to see wholesale war with absolute slaughter would freak people out. Just the stuff that you've seen over the past few days, if you've seen any of it on, on social media or on the news, just, just the, the stories is enough to make people sick because we're not acquainted with that. Jesus is not going to play around when he comes. His enemies aren't playing around now. I mean, they're, they're cutting heads off of babies and, you know, just doing all sorts of unspeakable things to people. And it's, you read about it in the Old Testament. You read about things like that where, where, where nations go in and just kill everybody. That's what's going on. And it's not a pretty sight. Well, Jesus is going to, he's going to be, have his year of retribution and vengeance. Well, when he does this, the, uh, the author here says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. He's coming to establish his throne. The king establishes his throne. And even if this is a, a, a marriage, he's establishing his throne. He's the, he's the king of kings. He's got a bride. His throne is going to be established forever. How would, he establish, how would a, a human king establish his throne forever and ever? By marrying a bride, having children, and putting his son upon the throne. Well, Jesus doesn't need to have children because <laughs> he's going to live forever. But he will marry a bride and he will be on that throne forever and ever. He's not going to pass it off to anybody else. He's going to reign himself personally. A scepter of rightness, of uprightness, is the scepter of your kingdom. A contrast between him and his enemies. He comes as the righteous king. His enemies are wicked. Do you know that the, name, that the word Hamas is in the Bible? The Hebrew word Hamas is the word violence. And there are many places in at least the minor prophets that speak specifically of violence using the word Hamas where, where Hamas will be destroyed. That violence will no longer be in the land. And there are things that God has spoken of against those who are violent and wicked that he will, he will pay them back. He'll give them retribution. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. That's why we don't repay evil for evil. Let God take care of that. He's going to do it. He has a scepter of uprightness compared to the wickedness of the world. He's going to do things for, for truth and righteousness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Comparing and contrasting with the people of this world who've loved wickedness and hated righteousness. 
You know, there, there's, there's wickedness all over the place. And so this is what he's, he's recognizing, that God has loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Of course, that makes him God. That is part of his character. And the king who comes will be God himself. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your fellows. Anointing of, of a king would, be, would happen when he's coronated. A lot of times a king would, would be coronated with oil. They'd pour the oil on his head. He'd be the anointed one. It would be a, a way of, of uh, recognizing who he is in his position as he's made king in that moment. So the king might also in that moment get married. So he would get coronated and married pretty close together. It would be a, you know, a dual event that everybody would just be overjoyed and why not he's getting he's becoming king he might as well get married at the same time and establish his throne and so that would happen and so that oil of joy he's he's saying this is this is what we you know the kings are anointed they're anointed into their position as kings your garments are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia all of these are very expensive ivory out of ivory palaces stringed instruments have made thee glad i've never seen an ivory palace but i can imagine that's not cheap the price of ivory is probably pretty expensive and so all of this preparation has been made he's like you smell good (laughs) you know it's a beautiful day you smell good you're in your power and your authority and everybody around you is excited the king's daughters among your noble ladies at your right hand stands the queen in gold from Ophir. i mean the king has got his majesty on he might as well have the queen clothed in gold and gold from Ophir was very costly and precious gold. You know, they can make cloth out of gold. They can weave gold into cloth. And that was a pretty common thing even up till recently. People actually still do this. You can have gold all over you. You can have it on your head. You can have it on your feet. You can have it on your arms and your ears and wherever else you want to hang something. You can also have it as in your clothing. And so she is clothed in gold. And that shows uh, a recognition of her position as well. Listen, O daughter, give attention and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. This is what the queen, the queen is saying. Just forget everything else. This is a wonderful day. The king is coming. The king will desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Bow down to him. And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will entreat your favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is interwoven with gold. See, same thing. She will led to the king in embroidered work. The virgins, her companions who follow her, they will be brought to thee. They will be led forth with gladness and rejoicing. They will enter into the king's palace. And so there's a big party going on. And this bride, she has her attendance. And it's a big procession. Well, when Jesus comes and comes to get his bride, there'll be a big procession. Many will come with him. And it'll be a big party as they go back into the king's chambers and into the king's palace where the Lord is. And Jesus has many different parables about this in the New Testament that we could, we could refer to. And the place of your fathers will be your sons. You'll make them princes in all the earth. And so this is showing the longevity of the uh, it's not just that there'll be a bunch of old men there. It's the princes now who have come of age and they're sitting in their father's stead. It's all things new. Uh, there, there's a, a continuity of, of trying to find the right word there. It's, um, you know, it's like their heritage and they just pass it on and it's, it's for future generations. He even says that I will cause thy name to be remembered in all generations. And so the writer writing about the coming of the king and his, and his marriage, he's looking forward to this. I'm going to write this down so that everyone will remember your name in the future. Therefore, people will give thanks to you forever and ever. And we can look from where we're at and go, surely Jesus is coming soon. You see all the things that are going on in the world, and we're looking forward to that, and we should. But as we see that, we should cause other people to remember the Lord's name as well. This writer was writing about his events in his day, and he's looking at the king the queen, all of everything was going on, and his, his thought went to the Lord. Some trust in horses, some trust in men. We'll trust in the name of the Lord our God. It doesn't matter who, king is, who the king is, on the earth anyways. We should trust in God. And so that's what he's, he's turning his attention back to God. All of these things are great. All of it's good. 
but his attention returns. So let, let people not forget who God is forever and ever. And when Jesus comes, they won't. They'll, they'll see him for who he is, and he will be remembered for all eternity.